Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Jap, and this is the Sony Xperia 1. And I genuinely think this is the most exciting phone that Sony has launched in years. But should you actually buy it? Well, before we dive in, if you can't get enough of your tech and want to see lots of behind the scenes shots, make sure you follow me on Instagram at the Tech Jap. So with the Xperia 1, it's all about that screen. 4K, OLED, HDR, 21 by 9 ultra wide. It's basically everything you'd want for watching movies and playing games. It's so good and such a step up from the horrible looking LCD screens on the Xperia 10 that came out earlier this year. Technically, it's a 3840 by 1644 resolution. So when you're watching, say, a 4K YouTube video, you're looking at 643 pixels per inch. That's crazy sharp. But all that crispy 4K goodness does come with a few caveats. When it's not playing 4K content, the phone actually defaults to Quad HD+, although that's probably a good thing to save battery. Netflix also doesn't support 4K on mobile yet, although you can watch shows and movies in Full HD with HDR. Finally, while watching native 21x9 video is amazing and really immersive, aside from movies, there's not really a whole lot of it. Normal 16x9 content, which is pretty much everything on YouTube and most TV shows on Netflix, they have big black bars either side of the video. There really is a lot to like here with the Xperia 1, and I do appreciate Sony trying something a bit different and offering something genuinely unique here. But for a price tag of about £850 or $950, it's got some stiff competition, and I'm not sure if it does quite keep up. But let's start with the good stuff. And it has some solid specs, including a Snapdragon 855, 6 gigs of RAM, 128 storage. Nothing crazy, but it's all you need. But really, it's that screen that's the real standout. Jump into the display settings, and you can choose between standard mode, which also lets you use the video image enhancement tech based on Sony's TVs, or the creator mode, which prioritizes color accuracy, which is ideal if you're using the big 6.5 inch screen to, say, edit photos, or watch a movie the way the director really intended. So obviously when you're using the phone normally in portrait mode, it is very tall. I haven't had too many problems with this, as you can swipe down from anywhere on the home screen to get the nav bar, and there's an easy one-handed mode. Just turn it on in the settings and double tap the home button to shrink the screen. And that extra height is useful for browsing the web as you get more on the screen, and it's much better suited to multitasking and having two apps side by side in split view. I do still find myself doing finger gymnastics sometimes to reach certain things, or open the nav bar while in an app though. But despite its size, it does feel nice to hold. At 178 grams and 8.2 mils thick, the tall and narrow design feels quite comfortable, but the Gorilla Glass 6 body is slippery, so I definitely recommend using a case. I must admit, I do like the look of it. It's got a premium, understated design, and I'm really glad Sony have trimmed those bezels, so we get a better screen to body ratio, 82% to be exact. But altogether, it still feels a year behind. I know some people do prefer a normal bezel, but in a world of notches, hole punches, pop-up and flipping cameras, it does feel just a little bit old-fashioned. Plus, the asymmetry of having a bigger top bezel might not be everyone's taste, and there's also no headphone jack, unfortunately. Of course, design is very subjective, but I think we can all agree this is a big step forward for Sony. And also for those of you who prefer a flat screen or that curved edges stuff where you get sort of palm rejection issues, you'll also really like this. We also get IP68 water resistance, stereo speakers, which actually sound pretty good, along with Sony's dynamic vibration feature built in, so you can turn up the haptic feedback when watching movies or playing games, and you get a bit of a rumble. Personally, I find it a bit inconsistent and distracting, but it is a cool option to have. Up top, we have the SIM card tray, and actually no ejector tool is needed here, you can just pry it open with your fingernails, and it comes with either single SIM or dual SIM with micro SD card support. Everything else seems to be on the right edge of the phone. From the bottom, we have the dedicated camera shutter, then the power, then the fingerprint reader, and above that, the volume rocker. I actually really like the side fingerprint reader. Picking it up, my thumb kind of rests there anyway, so it quickly wakes and unlocks it, and you don't have to press the power button. So far, it's been pretty reliable for me, which is good, considering there's actually no face unlock option here, which is a bit disappointing, to be honest. Now let's talk about this camera. Honestly, I think it's good, but not quite as good as I would have expected or hoped. I will be posting a full S10 Plus versus Xperia 1 camera comparison video after this review, so make sure you subscribe and don't miss that. But here's a few examples, and you can see both phones produce great looking photos, and they each have a 2x telephoto lens and an ultra-wide lens. In my experience though, the Xperia 1 doesn't handle dynamic range as well, with highlights often looking blown out. 
and generally I just prefer the brighter, more detailed S10 Plus photos. A quick tip when using the ultra wide lens though is change the camera settings to prioritize correcting distortion rather than image quality or else the fisheye look is way too strong. Video quality is good although there's no stabilization at 4K30 unfortunately so you have to drop it down to 1080p if you don't want a bumpy video. You do have the option though to shoot in HDR, the hybrid log gamma or HLG version if we're getting technical. Which is cool, dark areas have more detail and highlights are better exposed and it definitely looks better than standard video. But like shooting at standard 4K, there's no proper stabilization so it's pretty shaky. You also get a dedicated cinema movie app where you can shoot ultra wide video and tinker with all the settings and apply different color profiles if you want to be a bit more creative. Moving on to selfies and it's a bit of a mixed bag. In good light, the Xperia 1 can look nice, but it definitely over sharpens the photo and it can look a bit less natural sometimes. And in lower lights, even with beauty modes turned off, everything looks far too smooth. Speaking of beauty modes, if you turn all the beauty settings to max, this is what you get. And if you've got young children, tell them to look away now because it's disturbing. Seriously, that's the stuff of nightmares. I'm so sorry. So I do think the Xperia 1's camera is good, but I've just never had a wow moment. But what about battery life? How long does this thing last? Well, when you consider the Zenfone 6 has a 5,000 mAh battery, 4100 on the S10 Plus and 4000 on the OnePlus 7 Pro, the Xperia 1's 3330 mAh cell seems strangely small, but it holds up slightly better than you might expect, but it's still not great. By the end of a normal working day, I have about 20% of my battery left, and a one hour HDR Netflix show used 12%. So it's fine, it'll survive a full day or about four full movies, but I found myself being cautious about whacking up the brightness or watching YouTube in 4K. And for a phone that is all about watching 4K content and movies, you'd kind of think they'd put a bigger battery in it. It does support fast charging though, it takes about 90 minutes for a full charge, but it does use the USB PD standard so it will fast charge with any number of USB-C chargers, not just a bundled one. Although unfortunately there's no wireless charging option here. So I've been using the Xperia 1 for a few weeks now and there's a few little niggling things that I do wish were a bit better. Firstly, there's no way to hide the buttons and only use gestures. Sony are pretty much the only brand to go with the Google Pixel style of pill and back button. You can't hide them and just do swipe up gestures like you can on basically every other Android 9 phone out there. Other little things too, like you can't pinch out to get the ultra wide lens in the camera. Instead, you have to tap the zoom icon twice. And the side sense function, I just found to be so unreliable and hard to activate, I just turned it off. And also, over the last two weeks, I've had it crash three times on me doing various things. Although a volume up and power button hard reset does fix it. On the plus side though, we do get PS4 remote play. So that's pretty cool if you're a big gamer. Despite a few little niggles then, I really do like Sony's software. It looks good, it's fast, and I do love that creator screen option. So then, the big question, should you buy the Xperia 1? Well, if you're a big movie buff or you reckon you'll be playing lots of games on this, then yes, I definitely recommend it. It is a great phone. But as I say, for the price of £850 or $950, personally, I think I'd rather go with a Galaxy S10 Plus or say a OnePlus 7 Pro. I think they're better all-rounders. But that's not to say I wouldn't recommend this. I just think the audience is a little bit more niche. And I think after this pretty long review, watching this, you probably have a good idea of whether that screen and the movie and the gaming chops of this is gonna appeal to you. Or if not, then maybe it's worth saving your money and going for something like a OnePlus 7 Pro, which having used these side by side for the past few weeks, I have gone back to the 7 Pro, but that's just me. But what do you reckon? Are you a fan of the Sony Xperia 1? And do you think the 21 by nine screen is a good idea or just a bit of a gimmick? Make sure you do hit that subscribe button down there and also ding that little notification bell so you don't miss out on my full camera cam comparison. Miss out on what? <laughs> so you don't miss out on my upcoming camera comparison and also battery tests and loads of other cool videos I've got coming soon. Thank you so much for watching guys. I do hope you found that useful. And I'll catch you next time right here on The Tech Chat.